In our last part, the UK tested their atomic bombs on the Montebello Islands. Today I will be discussing another nuclear test site, and that time a tank survived a nuke. What? What? Created by Anthony Bezos in Australia. Operation Totem commenced on October 15th, 1953 at Emu Fields. And before you start, yes, Emu Fields is in the middle of the Great Victorian Desert in South Australia, which is the reason why the tests were there. No emus were harmed in the operation that I know of. The reason for the testing was to determine the acceptable limit on the amount of plutonium-240 which could be present in a bomb. Are the bombs any different between the bombs tested on the Montebello Islands? Well, yes. It's a bit complicated from what I gathered. The design was called PIPPA. While producing the plutonium for Operation Totem, it also produced a lot of electricity to offset the cost of creating the material to produce the bomb. So basically, the closest to an eco-friendly nuke. I mean, you think engineers would have found a way to minimize hazards in producing energy from nuclear power plants to even pass the World Health and Safety Test, but I digress. Aside from the two main nuclear tests, Totem 1 and Totem 2, there were also five smaller tests known as kittens, using a combination of conventional explosives such as these components with the addition of a neutron initiator. Neutron initiators create a burst of neutrons that pretty much triggers a nuclear bomb. More bang for your bomb, I guess. If I go into more of the science and politics that led to the operation, I'll go insane. And the reason why this video took so long to get made. Anyway, Totem 1 was detonated on the 15th of October, 7.30am, yielding around 9.1 kilotons of TNT. Along with Totem 1, three kittens were detonated, though I'm unsure when they were detonated. Totem 2 was detonated on the 27th of October. It yields 7.1 kilotons of TNT. Along with Totem 2, the last two kittens were detonated. By the end, Emu Fields became unsafe for further testing, most likely due to how the radiation was spreading and other reasons. The testings did teach the British scientists a great deal on how to conduct nuclear trials, which led to establishing monitoring stations across Australia, which would be used during Operation Mosaic and Operation Buffalo. Fortunately today, the radiation has decayed and you can even visit the obelisk of Tide 1, though I'd still be careful. Just saying. So where does the atomic tank come into play? Well, the atomic tank was an Australian Mark III Centurion tank. It was used during Totem 1's detonation. The tank was 460 meters or 500 yards away from the detonation of Totem 1. Why did they do the test? Well, to see if a running tank can survive a nuclear shockwave. What resulted was the tank being moved one and a half meters away, or five feet away. The antenna was gone, lights and periscopes were sandblasted, the armored side plates were blown off, the cloth covering the turret was incinerated, and a good dose of radiation was on the tank. However, despite the damage after refueling it, it ran on its own engine to be driven away from the test site. If you're wondering what if the tank had a crew on the test, they would most likely die from the shockwave or die hours later from radiation sickness. Well, unless they turned ghoul, after repairing the damage, scrubbing the radiation away, and overhauling it to be a Mark V Centurion, it was used as a training vehicle for the 1st Army Regiment in 1962. After upgrading the tank to the Mark V-1, it went on to serve in the Vietnam War as early as 1968. On the 7th of May 1969, during a firefight in Vietnam, the atomic tank was hit by an RPG. The turret crew was injured, but the tank was still running and continued to serve in the firefight. By the 11th of May, it returned to Australia for its third overhaul to become a Centurion Mark 10. And it's a little bit unclear to me, it still served in the Vietnam War until 1971, where it was put in storage. Uh, this was about the same time when Australia was trying to replace the Centurions, which would later become the Leopard 1. Today, the atomic tank is located at Robertson Barracks in Palmerston, Northern Territory. Join me next time as we look at the last and biggest Australian nuclear test site in Maralinga for Operation Buffalo. Hey mates, thanks for watching to the end of the video, please like and subscribe, it brings a smile to my face. And sorry this video took so long, just a lot of stuff happened outside of my control and also the script. Honestly, these videos should be like hours long, if I'm to be honest, but I'm trying to condense as much history as I can to this and it's kind of very complicated to be honest, like really complicated, but I hope that the videos 
or at least enjoyable enough for you to at least seek out the information yourself. But with that, that's it. So I'll see you guys next time on the Riz Australian History video. Yeah, sure, the last two kittens were detonated. Yeah, surely that won't be taken out of context.